this is why they can destroy the faith of young people so yes, badly. Yes, easily. So his name is attached to a fake gospel that is not historically accurate. In order to inoculate themselves against the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, they jettison the Holy Spirit and it leaves them vulnerable to this attack. And yeah. these, these youth are going to grow up and Google this stuff and it's going to be no good. Who are the eyewitnesses who approved of Paul's letters? Name one. But there's literally no difference between the collective eyewitness model of the Golden Plates or of the Book of Mormon's origin. There's no difference between that origin story and the Bible's origin story from the perspective of the witnesses. Well, now that's, that's their Achilles mm -hmm. heel because they're like, oh, shoot. No, don't go do that. Don't go read the Book of Mormon and ask. Don't go listen to the to the Holy Spirit. Don't do that. God doesn't want to talk to you. He already told me how to interpret this right. book so that I can tell you what to believe. Don't go find out for yourself. Right. It's it's just, it's it's evil. It's evil. Is this the guy? Yeah, I think I've this seen is this him. clip. The earliest copies of any of the Bible that we have is a business card sized fragment of one of the non-synoptic gospels. What happens when these kids go Google this? Now spiritual yep. confirmation is unreliable. Yep. Like this is it right It's here. faith for me, but not for thee. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I am your host, Cardinalis. Today, I'm joined in the studio by Jonah Barnes and Br oh, I almost said Brad Whitbeck. Sorry, Ed <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> I am gonna say honored. You're <laughs> honored. Awesome. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about this guy, Cliff Nettle, if I'm pronouncing his name right. You guys might recognize him from a lot of kind of anti-atheist debunkings oh. online. However, unfortunately, there's this big Achilles heel in evangelical mm. North American Protestantism mm -hmm. and evangelical Christianity that just they have not yet overcome. And though these are the faces we're used to seeing debunk atheists, they end up arguing like atheists mm -hmm. when all of a sudden they start talking about members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. Mormons. So out of love for Cliff Nettle, am I saying his name right? Cliff Nettle. It's actually Clifty Connectly. Okay, sure. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming it's nettle. <laughs> Please. But out of love Can't for Cliff, okay. out right. of love for Cliff and his fellow evangelical friends and his other anti-Mormon buddies, okay, we are going to serve those that loathe us and love those that hate us and actually show you, kindly correct you, hmm. how you can argue against Mormon theology without being atheist, right. that the atheism is not necessary when dealing with Mormons who are fellow believers in the body of Christ. So um, anyway, let us know. Actually, should we just react to the video? Let's just react to the video. Yeah, what do you we say? can just start playing it. Yeah, it starts off with a girl's question to Cliffy Connectly. Okay, cool. Awesome. So here we go. It's an Aztec name, Connectly. Yeah. Aztec, yeah. <laughs> he's Aztec. You can tell he's Aztec. Like, Paul wrote a lot of the books of the Bible and stuff, yeah. and, like, we trust him and we trust his word. Like, why do we trust him and not, like, I don't know, I'm thinking of, like, Joseph Smith, who started yep. Mormonism or whatever, yep. and he said he had a revelation from God yep. and, like, started a book and all this stuff. So why do we trust Paul, but we don't trust The reason that I trust Paul to give me accurate information is because the eyewitness community who knew Christ accepted his writings as legitimate. Okay, hold so on. Much uh, Wait, did he say right. Jesus' writings or Paul's writings? Uh, Paul's writing. Yeah. All, but either way, he invoked eyewitnesses. Yeah, okay. okay, Jonah, keep going. All right, so here's my little question to Mr. Knechtli. Which eyewitnesses? Who are the eyewitnesses of Moses? Who are the so eyewitnesses? So you throw out the Old Testament? Who, yeah, who are the eyewitnesses who approved of Paul's letters? Name one. Oh, when was Paul even written? We have a, a stamp-sized fragment of Paul. When was that written? A stamp-sized fragment of Paul, you know, dates from... First century, but the largest codex, the um, oh. well, regardless of the codexes or the codices, forty six papyrus forty six dates to they think one seventy five. One seventy five. Yeah, we're AD. talking a century and a half after Jesus Christ ascended wow. in the heavens. And, and funny thing about papyrus forty six, even in case you didn't know this, it does not contain the verses that say that we're dead to the works. It does oh. not contain that strange, strangely enough, that was added later. But anyways, there's Okay, fragments. well, also, guess what? We've got eyewitnesses too, bruh. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
The only problem is you just don't like them. But there's literally no difference between the collective eyewitness model of the golden plates or of the Book of Mormon's origin. There's no difference between that origin story and the Bible's origin story from the perspective of the witnesses. Well, now wait, so, now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go even even further because I, I'm not I'm not playing defense with this. Joseph Smith had over 20 people interacting with the gold plates, right. sign their names in their sacred honor to affidavits, swearing that they did, that they saw, that they felt all, all the things that Joseph Smith said. And they and we know that they did. It's not like 2,000 years ago, a, a postage sized uh, a fragment, a postage stamp sized fragment makes it through. Like we have their statements. We know their lives from, from many different angles. We have zero, zero accounts of mm -hmm. any eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ approving of Paul's letters. What are you talking about? You know, something else yeah. I just realized is our criticism out the gate of this was that we've got believers arguing like atheists, right? Mm -hmm. I just realized as I watched this video of Cliff Nettle that I've never heard an eighth. I mean, I've never heard an evangelical tell me when I say, well, what's your problem with the Book of Mormon? I've never had them say that an experience with God told them that it was false. Hmm, hmm. And part of the reason why I'm so convinced that North American hmm. evangelical Christianity is not actually a religious movement that connects you with God anymore. It's not hmm. actually a spiritual movement. Maybe for some individuals who kind of add some North American New Age to it and do this like fusion of New Age and like the Bible, maybe they get something out of it. But while at its core, it has no actual spirituality to it. It's all just gnosis and mm. uh, tribalism. Tribalism. Is tribalism. because, you know, in the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints, we say, pray about this, please. Like, develop a relation, an individual relationship with God and, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, whatever you want to call oh, it, yeah. okay? De de develop a, a relationship with God so pure, so connected, so uh, beautiful that you will recognize when he is speaking to you just as the apostles did, just as mm -hmm. the prophets did, mm -hmm. just as Moses at the burning bush recognized the voice of God. Yeah. Please become so spiritual and so connected with him that you can ask him a question and he will answer you as he promises he will answer you in scripture. Mm -hmm. Knock and it will be opened up to you. All yeah, right. Ed, do you remember what, what they said in the road to Emmaus after Jesus Christ resurrected, walked with them? They said to each other, who is this guy? And didn't our hearts burn within us? Yeah. So right? I've never had any of these Cliff Nettle characters ever say, I've really prayed about this and God has warned me that it's false. The only guy that mm -hmm. has was that drug addicted rapper that talked about his Everclear. <laughs> And, Holy and did you remember that? The guy that oh, smashed a bunch man. of methadone and smashed a bunch of Everclear it was like, I saw Joseph Smith in hell <laughs> on a balancing rock from Utah with a four-year-old daughter he never had. Like, I mean, that's that's the only guy that's ever- And people bought, people are like, yeah. <laughs> oh yes, here, come, let's interview this guy. He has such Dude, sage there was a insight. pastor, there was a North American evangelical pastor that literally picked that video up and it has almost three quarters of a million views now oh, no. as evidence of how Joseph Smith is in hell and his believers oh, are. Oh gosh. But but like I've never heard any one of them say, you know what? I've developed a relationship with God so good and so pure that I recognize his voice and his voice has warned me against evil mm -hmm. as prophesied in scripture that he will do. No, yes. no, they always start turning into atheists and and, and want to be NCIS investigators saying, "Yes, well, yes." The, uh, you know, the eyewitnesses, they'll turn into amateur archaeologists. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want to ask I want to ask Pastor Nettle here. He brings up eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ approved of Paul's writings. Demonstrably not true. But let's okay, fine, let's play your little game. Did the eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ ever write anything on their own? Who were these eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ who actually wrote their own gospels? Because, you know, we have two of them, like two. We have Mark, Matthew based on Mark, and we have John, period. I, I you know, my math might be off on this, but I swear and we have And it's always because apostles. of antiquities of yeah. the Jews that we say, see, they're secular, they're secular witnesses. You know, yeah. like there's... We have the writings of Bartholomew, but you, you reject them. Yeah. We have the gospel of Thomas, but you reject it.
We have all these apocryphal writings that they all say, oh, you can't trust those things. They say they're written by the eyewitnesses, but here you're saying, oh, but the eyewitnesses all agreed that Paul's epistles were true. Zero eyewitnesses ever testified Paul's yeah. epistles were true. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, well, let me keep going. Uh, you know, hopefully we're not shooting yeah, keep, uh, keep going. Uh, too far beyond the mark uh, here. Which for me comes back to who's reliable. And the bottom line for me is the evidence, evidence. historical in nature of the way he lived, taught, died, and rose from the dead is Jesus is reliable. Now, the okay, but okay. couldn't you say that Joseph Smith fulfills every single one of the roles of a prophet as defined in the Bible and in scripture? So, and he says, he says, and what it bottom, the bottom line for me, what it comes down to is evidence. Mm. You heard him say it. Yeah. You're a pastor. You're a Christian pastor. The bottom line, what it all comes down to for me is, oh, not faith, evidence. What are you, you're playing the atheist game. Well, that's like, well, show me evidence that there was that talking donkey in the Old Testament. Like, I'm sorry, did you see the zoologist report from right, 692 no. BC? And he says there's know? evidence that Christ rose from the dead. What evidence is there that Christ rose from the dead? It contradicts all human experience and all biology. Yeah, that's one of the number one things that Dan McClellan goes after. Yeah. And, you know, data over doubt and so on and so yeah, forth. Well, yeah, what is the evidence that he rose from the dead? A couple of a, a couple of papyri scrawled on, these, on the, mm -hmm. these little scrolls that are maybe 200 years after his Death, this is why Bart Ehrman isn't a believer. Bart Ehrman says, you got to be kidding me, guys. This is your evidence for it? No, you can't base it off evidence, dude. Yeah, playing, okay. Well, no, no. Playing uh, the atheist you game. Can't, you can base it off evidence as long as you include all five aspects of epistemological evidence. Like, there has to be spiritual evidence. There has to be physical evidence, hmm. logical evidence. Like, like, evidence is a very broad word. I think what you're trying to say is naturalistically naturalistically observed And evidence, he says evidence you know? in, in the, a nat natural evidence is okay. what he says. Yeah, so anyway, let's let him finish uh, speaking here. The way I find out about Jesus is from the eyewitnesses who saw him, who heard him. They wrote what they saw and they heard. Okay, well, and the eyewitnesses, <laughs> yeah, well, the eyewitnesses of Joseph Smith saw and heard and wrote down everything he did. Yeah, so, so right. far, there's no reason he shouldn't accept the Book of Mormon. Their writings were accepted as legitimate. His okay, oh, they were accepted as legitimate? They were burnt at the stake yeah. by every empire that rejected them. <laughs> and the only effective apostle to the pagans was the apostle Paul. Why? Because he could quote Greek plays to the Greeks. Because he could quote uh -huh. pagan literature to the pagans. He was considered, what's his terminology in Christendom? The, uh, the, the apostle to the Gentiles. To the Gentiles. That's it. Yeah. He was the apostle to the Gentiles because the Gentiles that rejected him spoke his language or sorry rejected the Christians he spoke their language Jesus Christ was accepted as legitimate by who Pontius Pilate and his apostles you mean the ones that were all summarily executed they were all accepted as legitimate he says well he and says, then also didn't understand that he was the Christ and like only three of them really did until finally like yeah. after all of these ascensions and miraculous things finally the last ones come around they're like oh so you're like the Christ of scripture it's like yes you idiots have been like, saying I this for three years but he says they were accepted as legitimate notice he never says who accepted them right who accepted them you mean some ecumenical council of, of Roman uh, politicians 300 years later? Who then rejected on? all the other books of anybody else's canonized uh, Bible that had a disagreement with their politics, ah, not with their religion. Right. You know? Right. Ah, See, yes, they rejected here. books like uh, written by eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. Then he says, oh, those are absurd. And he'll say it in just the next clip if you play. You can, you can listen to him say it. Okay, let's Remember see Remember he's saying he says. the eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. Okay, go ahead. Here we go. Historically reliable. The Gnostic Gospels were not accepted as historically reliable. And may they were not written until the second century. They were not written by eyewitnesses. The Gospel of Thomas was not written by Thomas. Good gracious, it's probably not written until 120, 130. 140. Okay, oh, well, oh, oh, okay. do we have any proof that the Gospel of Mark was written before 120, 130, 140 no. with no. such disgust? No. no, we have tiny little fragments of writings and people say, oh, we have 50,000 manuscripts. No, you have zero, zero handwritten manuscripts, zero original manuscripts. The Papyrus number 46, the first complete codex of the Epistles of Paul, not complete, not even close to complete, by the way, comes from 175-ish B.C., Whereas the Gospel of Thomas, paleographically, has been dated to the first century. Okay, so look at this. So you remember how I like, said it's like rule number nine of anti-Mormons that their their claims can never hold water past thirty seconds of Google research here, and, and that, that's <laughs> Google that's, of all places. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> not to say that Google is a repository of all human knowledge here, but I, I just quoted like you know. 
what is, and this is rough, we're doing this on the fly, so forgive any errors here, but I just wrote, what is the earliest papyrus of the Bible we have? And the earliest extant manuscripts. The earliest manuscript of the New Testament text is a business card size fragment, the P52. Gospel of John, Ryland's Library Papyrus P52, yeah, P52, which may be as early as the first half of the second century. So Christ... A lot of people say he was born 3 AD, 3 BC, somewhere in there around, guess what? Zero Anno Domini. All right. Christ is born. Everybody agrees. 33 years old, thir by, by 80, 33, 34, 35, whatever. He's got, let's just for easy math, see, say AD 40, and this is AD 150 or 140 in the first half of the second century. The earliest copies of any of the Bible that we have is a business card sized fragment mm -hmm. of one of the non synoptic gospels. Yes. Okay. Yes. One of the non synoptic gospels. It's like a, it's like okay. a verse that is at least prop at least 20, 30, 40, 50, most likely 70, 80 or 90, potentially 100 years later. That's yes. literally if, a World War II veteran in 1940 wrote a treatise on Joseph Smith's eyewitnesses or on Joseph Smith yes. in 1840. And then by 2040, we all said, oh, well, this is true. And I trust him as an eyewitness. It, that yes. is asinine. It, it it'd is. be like as if right now, Ed and I wrote a bio, uh, wrote the story of a World War II veteran's birth. That's a hundred years ago. We could, and right? we, I mean, we could make it believable, you know. and it would still not be good. It would still not be good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there, there's that. There, I'm sorry, Cliff. Like you do such good things with atheists. How mm -hmm. do you have such a blind spot for members? It's like if there is any proof that pride is a sin that escapes none of us. Mm. Like this is it, right? It's here. faith for me, but not for thee. Atheists come after him, and he goes, "Hey." Hey, faith, spirit, Holy Ghost, all these things. But as soon as somebody says, well, then what about Joseph Smith? He goes, well, I mean, you have to be an archaeologist to understand that uh, the paleographers will tell you. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's like, you, you, anyways, okay. faith for me, but not for thee. And I even right, get, let's keep I, going. I give him extra points for gray hair, too. So. All right, right. Well, he on. does have good hair. Yeah. He's got he good hair, bro. It's totally good. 40. Thomas was not around at that point. He was dead. So his name is attached to a fake gospel that is not historically accurate. Okay, but okay, it, but so is Paul's. Like, Paul's yeah. name is attached to documents. <laughs> the, like these, the first papyrus 46, the first rubbish you just said, P52, that's a hundred years. What's after he going to do about happened? the Song of Solomon? Is I, he sure I, Solomon wrote the Song of Solomon? I don't, you know, I don't get this logic. Like, it's so ridiculous. What happens when these kids go Google this? What happens when this youth camp, uh, these kids go to Google and they go, actually, this uh, is this is why the actually speaking professors of ancient religious studies that are really just atheists that want to bash on religious books. This is why they can destroy the faith of young people so yes, badly easily because literally here you have a guy who's acting like he's freaking NCIS Salt Lake City. Yes. <laughs> all right. You know, he's acting like this cat has done his due diligence verifying the verifiable of these early manuscripts. And then with one Google search, there's some atheistic professors like, yeah, you know, those pastors that tell you that, like, you know, the Bible's loaded with eyewitnesses. Look, the earliest fragment we have at best was yep. written 150 years because of verifiable, I don't know, carbon, carbon dating or at least fake HMD. Like, you know yes, what I'm saying? Right. Yes. And, 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 and then these kids are left there thinking, oh my gosh, I believe this guy in my courtyard and I felt something. I based and my I, faith off the sand that he fed me. He fed me sand. And, and now spiritual yep. confirmation is unreliable yep. because I've been fed in his desire to be a believer who argues like an atheist in, in his desire to just be atheistic in his arguments. I, I now can't trust my feelings. And yeah, and their desire. And by the way, there's a certain extent that like maybe you shouldn't trust all your feelings. All right, there there is the the false gospel of feelings alone, you know. But like at the same token, like you cannot overlook the scripture in the road to Emmaus when he says, "Look, you know, like did our hearts not burn? Did our hearts not burn? In order to inoculate themselves against the restored gospel of Jesus Christ, they jettison the Holy Spirit, and it leaves them vulnerable to this attack. And yeah. these these youth are going to grow up and Google this stuff, and it's going to be no good. So wow. if, if you're one of these kids who was at Connectalee's camp or whoever this guy is, if, if, if you heard this stuff, I want you guys to know, okay? 
this manuscript garbage is not how we know Jesus Christ was resurrected. If you pray about it, trust your feelings, look at the evidence, study the scriptures, look, read the authorities on it, you can get a testimony that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Absolutely. Okay? Without any of this garbage, you don't need a degree in paleography to know it. Okay, It's faith. And we have, actually helpful for our brother Cliff here in the Discord, a definition of the word oh, faith, which we, we always get lambasted for, right. faith faith versus works. Okay, well, let's educate our brother here about what faith actually is. Faith is belief and trust and loyalty to God or belief in the traditional doctrines of religion or firm belief in something for which there is no proof. And I think it's fair to say no possibility of proof in the foreseeable future because, like, for example, do I have faith that Joshua wrestled with the angel or or Jacob. or Jacob wrestled with the angel? You know, I haven't been able to find the exact spot in Israel <laughs> where there's footprints that match the toe prints mm -hmm. of Jacob and there's burn marks in the right. soil from the wings of the angel. All right. I, I don't have any of that. OK, <laughs> but do I have a trusting relationship enough with my heavenly father and with the scriptures to believe that? OK, I believe this happened, that the parable it's meant to teach me is true, that it will better my life and that the scriptures are indeed the 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 what do they say mouth breathed utterances of god yes, or whatever yes. yes like i i don't need a snapshot from an aerial photography drone of right. jacob wrestling an angel for me to believe that right. it actually happened and the sad part is i've seen cliff nettle make the exact same argument against atheists mm. when atheists say like well there's no proof of god and he said you never ask for 100 percent proof mm. oh my gosh wait we got to look that up actually i'm thinking that would now be that i know this guy's name watch this is if we find this right now in the last like four minutes of this radio program that is going to be wild so cliff nettle watch owns an atheist uh about Proof, where he says you don't need 100% proof and he uses the evidence of a pharmacy oh here it is right here oh my gosh it's right here check oh, this oh, out oh is this the guy yeah I think I've this is his him. clip 100% evidence that Jesus raised from the dead because if you cannot give me that then that makes the Bible incredible okay that would base your life on 100% proof yes I'm skeptical of everything that means you take a chemistry kit to the pharmacy oh and when the pharmacist gosh. hands you that bottle of medicine you chemically analyze it to make sure there's no poison in there right that's why because unless you're no, that's Cliff Nettle oh, wow. right here. You're, dude, dude, right Bullseye, here. Bullseye, dude. Proof. You would never ah. dare take that pill and put it in your oh. mouth. Because maybe the pharmacist put poison in there. Yes, I don't base it on 100%. Well, thank you. I so don't tell me you base your life on 100% ah. proof. You can't ah. find this, dude. That's not, it's not possible. It's a choice to... Okay, so we're going to find a oh, better wow. clip of this. That was fantastic. It was. Yeah, yeah, look at this. So here is Cliff Nettle. Oh my gosh. Cliff Nettle, 100% proof. Dude, pegged it right there. Like, you don't survive 30 seconds <laughs> with a Google of search. a Google search. Yeah, so Cliff <laughs> Nettle, 100% with my new keyboard. I can't find where the percentage button is. Oh, it's over the five. 100% proof. And let's just find a better YouTube short or something like that. Look at this. Wow. TikTok Christianity edits. I want 100% proof that Jesus Christ was resurrected. Here's another TikTok. Yep. I want 100% evidence that Jesus raised from the dead. Because if you cannot give me that, then that makes the Bible incredible. Ma'am, I, I can't. I don't base my life on 100% proof. Well, maybe that's he always preaches right. standing up. Oh, you do? <laughs> you base your life on 100% proof? Yes. Oh, really? That's why I'm skeptical of everything. Really? So that means you take a chemistry kit to the pharmacy, and when the pharmacist hands you that bottle of medicine, you chemically analyze yep. it to make sure there's no yep. poison in there, right? That's why. Because unless you medicine. have 100% proof, you would never dare take that pill and put it in your mouth. Because maybe the pharmacist put poison in there. Yes. Yep. He's right. Oh, 100%. right. Thank I you. So don't tell me you base your life on 100% proof. No, you don't. None of us do. That's not. It's not possible. You Oh, He's right. so there he is. He's right. In there, your face. There is Cliff Nettle literally arguing with himself. What Cliff Nettle said six or seven years ago, according to this TikTok, Good okay, find. <laughs> does not carry water against Cliff <sighs> Nettle of 2020. You found it, dude. Bullseye. Bullseye. Oh, See, but they my get stuck gosh. in this trap. They get stuck in this trap because they want to inoculate themselves against our faith. Our, our religion is mm -hmm. based on a personal, direct experience with the Spirit confirming the truth to us. 
That's that's their Achilles mm-hmm. heel because they're like, oh shoot, no, don't go do that. Don't go read the Book of Mormon and ask. Don't go listen to the to the Holy Spirit. Don't do that. God doesn't want to talk to you. He already told me how to interpret this right. book so that I can tell you what to believe. Don't go find out for yourself. Right. It's it's just, it's it's evil. It's evil. Wow. Is is. This is this is crazy. Well, I, I I don't want to say it's evil as much it's, as I think it's separating s- people from from their father, and I don't like it at all. I think it's gross, and he and he doesn't when it's convenient. Faith for for me, but not for thee. And and evangelicals, guys, you have a beautiful faith. Jesus rose from the dead. But if you start out, you start basing it off this evidence stuff, you're going to be like that little girl in this embarrassing video, and you're going to say to some atheist, "Oh well, there's evidence." There's 50,000 manuscripts, and that dude's going to take a 30-second Google search, and he's going to show you that that is not true, and it's going to blow up your faith. And your young people go off to college, and they lose their faith because of it. Yeah, and so Cliff, Cliff, my boy, my brother, you got guts. You're going out there in the lion's den. We got nothing but respect for the content creation, for you know the hustle. We'd love to have a conversation with you, but we just... We just think you're arguing with yourself and you're falling into the trap a trap of evangelicals arguing like atheists when it comes to Mormons. You're so good at arguing like believers, actually like naturalistic observers and scientists, even when it comes to atheists. But all of that just goes out the window when it comes to members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And the worst part is your own sound bites mm-hmm. aren't consistent with yep. each other. Your own sound bites argue with themselves and there has to be internal logic and coherence in your arguments or else it's just plain old. It's not biblical. It's not scriptural. It's not philosophical. It's not logical. None of that. So if you feel you've been misrepresented, Cliff, give us a call, my man. We'll fly you down. We'll stick you in Jonah Barnes seat here. It's a much more comfortable seat than Ed's seat, you know, and and so we'll, we'll put you in that seat and you're welcome to talk about evidences of the eyewitnesses. You're welcome to talk about uh, the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith, the whole nine yards. You you got carte blanche access to this studio and, you know, uh, Ed here, oops, I pressed the wrong button. Ed here, you know, he'll protect both of us from the raging woke scolds outside, you know, because I'm sorry, I'm sorry I said evil, Cliff. I should have said evil. The trap is evil. You're not, not you're a good dude, you're trying to do a good thing, but you're being fooled, you're being sucked into this, Cliff, you're being sucked in. Dude, an angel of light. It's a trap here. And you know, we can have such a good Covey-esque win-win scenario going on to just change this entire planet's paradigm on everything. And guys like this are just bickering and fighting for the sake of bickering and fighting. Yeah, I, I, it's amazing. On one hand, it's well, all there's probably also a profit motive. Let's face it, if people uh, money, are, money, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of sad. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, if you got any questions for us, please reach out on the website. If you disagree with us, please comment in whatever forum you can below. Either way, for this and more, please make sure that you check us out at wardradio.com. I ain't trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown. My life been good and